we're going to have a chat. And you may think I'm talking to you as the audience, but I'm talking to me when I'm in my 20s. What advice do I have? Listen, you can listen in to the conversation that I'm having with me because it, with any luck, you're going to be able to learn something. Welcome to the channel Leadership with Mike. On this channel, I help managers become leaders and I do that with no nonsense sense, if that makes sense. Now, like I said, today I'm talking to me 20 years ago or 20-ish years ago. What advice do I have? What should I have done differently? First things first, build your network earlier. Don't be that lone wolf. Now, some people like myself bounced around different schools and worked at different restaurants for, you know, a year, two years. Try to build more relationships. You don't have to be in contact with everybody all the time in order for that relationship to be strong. But having a solid network, I look at people around me that have built a network and literally have a guy for everything. Start working on being that guy that has a guy and I think that will really help you in your future. Have more fun. You get out of school and it's great on the grindstone. You need to start making money. You need to focus on picking up shifts. You need, you don't. That extra 50 bucks, that extra 100 bucks you're gonna make will pale in comparison to the experience you're gonna have with your friends by getting out on time. And I worked in the restaurants, so you never knew when your night was gonna end. And a lot of gatherings happened before I was done my shift, and then it's too late to go. Stop picking up so many shifts. Yes, of course, you have responsibilities, you have bills you have to pay, you have things you wanna do, but just loosen up a little bit. Have some fun. It's not all about work. This is a big one. Don't finance yourself into some handcuffs. When I was younger, I bought, I bought a beautiful bike. I'm gonna, the picture's gonna be right here. But I financed it. I financed a car before that. I financed stuff before this. That is going to hinder your ability to say, I'm not picking up the extra shift and I'm going to build experiences. When you finance anything, usually it's because you can't pay for it, but you can fit into the easy squeezy plan of 199 a month. But what happens when you get three of those? Now you're in for 600 bucks. Try as hard as you can to stay away from financing. If you need a set of wheels, you don't need a brand new set of wheels. Don't be afraid to roll around an old beat up pickup truck. Maybe that's my redneck coming out, but don't finance everything. I would like to tell myself, read Rich Dad, Poor Dad sooner and act upon it sooner. This book is probably one of my top five books that I've ever read because there's a lot of knowledge that is not taught in schools. I'll put a link in the, in the description for the specific book I'm talking about. I wouldn't go buy this game because I played the game. It's not so fun. But the book, the original, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, buy it as early as you can and let the messages sink in and take action on the message. Oh, this, this one hurts. Trust your gut. Buy the townhouse. There was a townhouse I sh should have bought. My girlfriend, who's now my wife, told me, buy it. It's $99,000. And at the time, I was renting, and I was listening to other people who said, well, you could get, but you could get into trouble. You may have this problem. You may have that problem. Listen to your gut. Take everybody's information and make the decision and just buy it. You would have been so much further ahead if you got into real estate earlier. So much. And on that note, invest Start investing as soon as you get your first job. The $100 a month is nothing. You're an idiot if you didn't do it, <laughs> like I didn't do it, because it's compound interest. I think it said that compound interest is like the eighth wonder of the world or something like that. That $100 is not going to ruin your night out. 
not when it's spread out over a month. If you can afford a Starbucks a day, you can afford to invest in yourself. So do it. Don't be negative. As much as things happen, you can look at life in two ways. You can assume that the worst is going to happen, but you can equally assume that the best is going to happen and both have the same chance. It's a 50-50, but it's what you focus on that tilts the scale that way. So when you are in your 20s and you think that everything is, the deck is stacked against you, realize that there's a lot of opportunity that you could be focusing on the positive things that happen and the positive actions you've taken, which will start to snowball and build on each other. So start thinking, I'm not saying, oh yeah, everything's wonderful. No, but look for the silver lining in everything. It will help immensely. You need to try and you need to fail more. Now, I tried a lot of small businesses, some t-shirt companies, an app company. I should have done more and I should have done it faster because now I'm looking at a situation where you have some real estate. You've got a great YouTube channel that's starting to blow up. Imagine if I failed more, the knowledge that I would have right now. So keep that in mind. Fail more by trying more. Next, don't give a flying f what other people think. If you're not hurting anybody, if you're not jeopardizing anybody's well-being, don't care what they say. Literally 90% of the people that I was worried about their opinions, I don't even associate with anymore. Now that could go back to me not having a great network. Those that I've started to bring into my network, of course, their opinions matter. But there's so many people that I worked with for years that are literally strangers. Yep, I got them as friends on Facebook. But do their opinions matter of what choices I'm making or how I'm moving on with my life or not moving on with my life? No, absolutely not. They have no weight. So just remember that when you meet these people, don't give them any weight on your decisions. Again, take people's advice for what it's worth. It's somebody else's perspective. But don't not do something because you're afraid to look silly. Because you can do that on your own. Don't worry. This last one here, this is the one it really, it, it really hits home. These are the good old days. You're going to be going from work workplace to workplace, from job to job. Uh, you're going to go from party to party, from nightclub to nightclub. These are the good old days. I promise you, the struggles that you're dealing with now, in 20 years, you're going to talk to your buddy James and you're going to laugh about them. You're going to be like, what idiots we were. That, well, that, those were some fun times. So give yourself a, a head check right now. Right now, in my 40s, these are the good old days. The troubles that I'm going through, the fun that I'm having, how my kids are annoying me at times or how they are making me laugh and split a gut at times. These are the stories that when I'm in my 60s, I'm going to wish I could get back to. So remember, these are the good old days. As cliche as it sounds, it is what it is. I hope you found value in this. Remember, do you? You've only got one life, so don't be too scared of investing. Don't be too afraid of failing. Don't be afraid of just trying to make life for you as early as you can. Oh, one more, one more. That girlfriend you got, marry her a little earlier.